All right, hello guys. Welcome back to another episode of Galley Stories, Stories of the Bering Sea and Beyond. I am your host, Mark Kaler. And before we get started today, I just want to let you know, uh, as you've probably heard me mention previously, uh, we don't really edit these, so you, you just get what you get. And today, sitting here on the gale uh, in the uh, waters here uh, in Ballard, uh, there's a bit of wind, so you're, you might hear a bit of that as we go. But today's guest is, uh, some people might know him as uh, Steve Davidson. Uh, I've always known him as Harley Davidson. How are you doing today, Harley? Doing fine. Doing fine, Mark. Thanks for inviting me. Hey, thanks for coming down. Thanks for coming down. Uh, so you've listened to uh, some of these before. What I want to start off first of all. You know, just you're you're growing up. Oh, about my my growing up and yeah. Okay. Where were you born? And oh, I, I was born in Los Angeles, and oldest of five kids. And then we moved to uh, Washington when I was ten years old, and I was. Thankful my parents got me out of that L.A. area, and we moved down to Kent. And, and I, I lived down there. With me. I was the oldest of five, so and my younger brother was 15 years younger than me, and we had three sisters between us. Spread out quite a ways. Spread them out quite a ways. So yeah, kind of really, you know, I was five years older than the next one, so I really kind of spent a lot of time just with, with by myself. My parents have started a business there they had a family billiard so i got to work in the pool hall as a young man and through high school that's where we hung out down in kent and so uh hanging out in the pool hall yeah were you yeah. good at pool yeah it was pretty dang good <laughs> but, yeah, it was pretty good I, I you know rack them up and play the jukebox and clean the tables and yeah i, I got pretty good at it and make a little extra money off those guys coming up it was a, it was a family billiard so we kind of kept it kept it clean but it was it was pretty good and then i i um after high school, I was in sports, and I was trying to trying to see what the heck I was going to do. And I, uh, I I actually got a scholarship for football, and I went and played football at a community college for one year, and then didn't really enjoy that as much as I thought I would. And I was still looking to go to college, and still doing trying to figure out what I was doing. And I wound up going up to uh, Western Washington, up in Bellingham, and then that's how I got attracted to fishing. I was. Um, Oh, going going between classes, I was trying to find some guys to go have a beer with, and and the, these guys, hey, you want to go have a beer? And I go, no, I, you know, I can't, I can't, I got to go to work. You know, what, what do you guys do? And they said, oh, oh, we're fishermen. Oh, you're you're fishermen. Where do you fish at? And they, well, they fish up in Alaska, but actually, they fish in Puget Sound too. And uh, if I uh, if I wanted, they would ask their captain. They they think they have an opening and. Maybe I could go fishing with them. Maybe not go to work that day. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I go okay. And so, so I wound up going fishing with them there in in, uh, in Puget Sound on, on a on a drum saner with fall fish, and it was fall time, and we were just kind of around Cherry Point and you know and Lummy Island and stuff out, outside of Bellingham. Mm -hmm. What was your job? Oh, I started out as a cook and the, run the drum. I was had to learn how to run. They have the big reel on the back of the boat, and so I had to learn how to coordinate between the reel and the fair lead. The fair lead is the thing that guides the net when you're pulling it in, and then the, the drum it, it just reels it up. So I'd, I'd operate the drum and back and forth with the fair lead, kind of like a sewing machine. or mm -hmm. Almost like a little spinner reel, too, right? Like a spinner, the, yeah, like a spinner reel. Yeah. You just got to feed, feed it up so it don't go wadded up and... It was, uh, you know, there was four of us and uh, a guy in the skiff, and he would take off, and, and it was a big old boat. It was like 65, old wooden boat, you know, and, and actually that's where I got my nickname Harley. What do you remember the name of that boat? So, uh, the Sunlight. Uh, J Jim Briscoe. Jim Briscoe and the Sunlight. He still has that boat, and it still fishes up in, in Bellingham there. Uh, now we got to hear the Harley story. Yeah, and so, so there was like three of us, and then it, all of us were named Steve. And so... so and so he kept saying, watch out, Steve. And then everybody would jump back, right? And so then he said, okay, that's it. That's it. You, you, your, your last name's Davidson, so your nickname's Harley. Uh, and then he, the other guy got to be, one guy got to be Steve, and the other guy got to be Fox. And his name was Steve Fox. But So you're Fox, you're Harley, and, and you're Steve. And so, so now that started in the late 70s, and it was kind of, okay, I'll, you know, I'll be Harley. It was kind of fun, but I wasn't quite sure about somebody giving you a nickname, but and then, it, and then it kind of stuck with me, and I, I continued going fishing in Alaska, and it, and, it, and it, you could tell where the, if the person where you met the person or where the person met you, as if they would call you Harley or they call you Steve, 
But then they'd say, okay, that guy met me from, you know, some certain areas in, in Alaska. I used to fish different uh, salmon areas in Alaska. And I'd say, okay, you met me when I was a salmon fisherman, or did you meet me when I was a crab fisherman? Because as a crab fisherman, I was Steve at that point for a while, and then it got all mixed up, and then you just turned into a Harley. No. <laughs> <laughs> vroom, vroom. <laughs> yeah, right? And I got no, mo- no uh, motorcycle, no tattoos. Uh, how old were you the first time you went out there then, when you were on the, oh, the Sunseeker, uh, you said it was called? Yeah, the Sunlight. Yeah, sunlight. I was, I was uh, probably I was probably 20 years old. Okay. Well, let's see, that was 70, I was 21 years old. Yeah. I was in 77. I started fishing in Puget Sound in 77. And then I fished there for a couple, three years. And I wound up being married and having a baby. And then my, my daughter, she was born premature and she was really expensive really pretty but she was really expensive and i i didn't have health insurance or anything so i needed to try to pay for her and the time i was still kind of doing some carpentry work and doing some uh, fishing around puget sound and just trying to make life still taking classes at the college and still trying to figure out my life and go things but now i have a daughter that's you know premature and i have a big bill and so and then she was born in november of 1980 and by January of 81, I went fishing in Alaska of, for the first time on a crab boat. And we, we had, What was the name of that boat? That was Alaska Monarch. And the, the way that started, I was, uh, I was hanging with these guys that, when I was fishing in Bellingham. And I, I was trying to fit in with the crew, and we were having fun doing this Puget Sound fishing. And, the, and I started hanging around the docks with them, and I was looking down the docks, and I go, well, who are all those guys over there? And they go, what do you mean? Those, I said, those guys over there, all the Corvettes and everything, who are those guys? <laughs> and they said, oh, those are the crab fishermen. And I said, oh, really? And they go, yeah, those are the crab fishermen. They're, uh, yeah. And I said, okay, I'll see you guys in a little while. And so I went over and I started hanging out with those crab fishermen. And then, the, you know, and I, I hooked up with this guy and, and then he, he, we got to be buddies. And, and when they had an opening, he called me. And that was right after my daughter was born, and I was in the dire need for some big bump or some finance. And so I went up there, and uh, yeah, it was January of 1980. Huh? She was born, or no, 81, January of 81. It was the first time I we went up with him on the Alaska Monarch. I met him in King Cove, Alaska. We we're going to do some bear dive fishing. 58 cents a pound. It, was, and it, wasn't, it wasn't a big price, but there was a lot of bear I didn't know. I had no idea. And it was just me and this guy, which was a monster. He's like a, a Tom Abbott. This guy was like, like he was somebody you'd read, you'd read, see him out of some movie or a book or something. This guy was crazy. He was, he was like a logger and a fish, crab fisherman. And he was big and strong. And I kind of, you know, wanted to be like him or wanted to, wanted to do what he was doing. And he was making good money and we were doing some fun. But so I hung around with him and, and went for, and went with him on the Alaska Monarch for a while, but I was I wasn't very skillful, and it was a little bit harder than I thought. It was cold, really cold. My feet were so cold. I remember putting my socks on, and I put bread bags over it, and then put some more socks on. And my feet were so numb, and my hands were so numb. And the first thing I did is put my hand in the wrong place, and the pot came swinging back by and splatted all the meat out of. Out of my fingers, I still got scars, but that, that, you know now I'm now I'm now I'm yeah I know you're getting tested you're getting tested hard you know yeah and so how many guys were on the boat uh, there, when I, when we started there was only four Tom and me actually there might have only been three this other guy that wasn't very good either and so me <laughs> me and this guy that weren't very good were with Tom I don't remember the fourth guy. <laughs> At the very start, and then I think we had to get a, we got some, we got a couple more guys came from Bellingham, and they were a little better than I was. They'd done a couple seasons before me, and they were kind of, kind of rat. There's a lot of bullying going on on the boats, right? And at that time, these guys are kind of making making me not feel like I'm, a, I'm, I'm that good of a guy. You know, they're right. trying to bully you, and. And I, it's okay. I, I, they could do better than I could. They had more seasons, more skill. They could tie better knots than me. They can. They knew what to do. They could dance around. I can't. I don't know no dance. I'm just a worker. Right. <laughs> but then. You point uh, off. I'm <laughs> right. And so then we just uh, we just start figuring it out. We'll get 
we get it we get it figured out i like to see those guys now i sometimes think about that now i remember those two dudes i wonder where they are because the one's they, bullying you yeah because yeah. <laughs> that was where, all, where are you at now yeah right that was 1980 you yeah, know things we, are we, different i bet they're a little different too i wonder how they look i sometimes gonna find them but yeah uh, we continued doing that for a while and then you know the marriage was not going so well so i had to move back home and kind of started fishing around Puget Sounds, stayed out of crabbing for a couple of years, but then I wasn't happy. So now you're either, you know, you're dealing with a couple of different things. First, yeah. you weren't doing, you know, you're, you just got to sort your stuff out. So when the, once the marriage dissolved, then I uh, went back fishing. And then when you go fishing at that time, it, that was 1983, 84 probably. And when you go fishing at those times, then you're, I was fishing long periods of time. You know, it was, Probably at the year, I bet it was nine to ten months a year. Still, obviously, still the derby days. You guys were just going out and running hard. Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah, how was your how was your daughter at this point? She you went you she 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 came she got together real fine and she's and she's she was born premature you know but she uh, she's a fighter and a survivor and right now she just finished her master's degree and she's working as a, a school psychologist and you know and she's. She's doing really fine. So those know. guys were, were out buying brand new Corvettes coming back from crabbing, and you were paying needle needle with pizza <laughs> carrying it. I give my <laughs> money to UW. <laughs> UW Medical Hospital. Okay, so That's what, where she was we born. We went back up in 1983. What boat did you go back up to? And You know what? I went, to, I went on a small boat out of Bellingham, a little 42-foot boat, and I went up to go fish a bear dying in a, a Kodiak. And we took this boat from Seattle, or from Ballard, or Bellingham, and we went up to Kodiak and I got there and I remember getting there it was mid-February around my birthday and we were on strike we were, it was so icy the things were just really and this owner of the boat was an old Portuguese guy and and he had this terrible stink about him he just in every and we were in the middle of the, Bering, or the uh, Gulf of Alaska trying to travel and this guy just had a stench and me and we were only me and this other guy. There were two crew members and this one ca- Portuguese captain. And he, oh, oh, every time a wave would come, he'd make all these noises and this stench. And me and this other guy kept going, "What the world have we got into?" <laughs> we went with him and we got to Kodiak and we went and did the season. But he didn't know what he was doing. He couldn't catch any crab, and we didn't make any money. Really, it was kind of just a real. It wasn't a very good deal. And so at the time, there was a big crab boat there, the Golden Dawn. The Golden Dawn was in in uh, in Kodiak, and I and I got on board there, and I got to go to the Bering Sea for the first, well, second time. For who was the captain on there when you? Uh, this guy, oh, I can't remember his name. He was he was a pretty nice guy. He had a daughter that was born premature in the hospital, same time I did. No wonder you got on. I know, right? <laughs> right? No, he was he was a pretty cool well, guy. Was she called the Golden Dawn then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was a crab boat, and it was before it had the extra house and everything. But mm-hmm. yeah, it was gold then. Well, yeah, it was. It, she was golden with uh, was it black? I might she, have had a black trim. I, or it was gold I, with I worked black on that, and we, and we weren't really making any money on that boat either. I remember going to ground on it though. Really? Yeah. Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go, let's going through False Pass. Let's huh? hear about that. <laughs> going through False Pass. It, I'm trying to remember the name of those guys. There's three guys on there. They're they've been on the boat for a while. They're they were good guys, but uh, he um, he went through False Pass and, and bumped up on the beach there, and he, you know, going through the cans, and he uh, he he uh, got a, a bunch of black sand. He, he kept he didn't turn his pumps off, his crowd pumps, so the water instead of sucking water in to keep the ballast on the on the boat, he was sucking in sand, and he filled up his crab tanks with sand. I mean, not filled, but he put a couple three feet of sand in the bottom of the tanks, and so. And we were sat there on the beach for a little while until the tide lifted us and floated us, and then we got away. But I had to get all that sand out of the goddamn bottom of the tanks. <laughs> Shovel it all out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, it was, it was bad stuff. We did that for a while, and then the, then the yeah, well, it wasn't a very good season. We were in the Bering Sea over trying to crab, and that wasn't working out well. And so they wanted to go. Uh, and it, they were just gonna. Stop, just tie the boat up and so I got on uh, on the uh, Golden uh, Pride that's part of the Golden Pisces I was going to go trawling for the first time and I tried that for a few weeks and I realized I'm not a dragger I, I don't know but these, these 
That that really goes slow. I'm going, holy smokes, man. Dude. Well, your first experience on the crab boats, you said it, you, you were freezing. You was kicking your ass. You weren't as good as the other guys. And then you get it, you, you get on a trawler, and you're like, this is too slow. Way too slow. <laughs> too much time in the house. Or oh what? God, you put you put you, you you put the net out for about five minutes, and you run in and watch your movie, and then you watch another movie, and then you and then you, I don't know where you, I get up and go look around. Nobody's there. Everybody's in their bunk still. Oh, well, <laughs> just melt some cookies burning every once in a while. But I, 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 I don't know. Was it, was that, it? that wasn't going to be my cup of tea either. Yeah. And so then I, I took off and I, and I decided to go uh, pursue my salmon career a little more. It got to be su- summertime, so I went off to Chignik, and and they were really doing well there at that time. And the that was mid '80s, and it was a uh, it was the place to be. And and I went up. I went on the beach there. I just flew into this village. Got in there and landed, and I wanted to go uh, go salmon fishing. I, I knew some crew members there, and they were telling me um, where to go and stuff. I flew into Chignik Bay, and I asked around, and there was a couple guys who were going to offer me a job. My my buddy was going, "Oh man, that guy, you know, he's probably not going to pay you. You know, he, he's he's got some. He he doesn't do very good on that." What year was this? Probably eighty seven. Eighty seven, eighty eight. So yeah. was it, was that silver lining there, or oh, was it two draft? No, yeah, yeah, Norquest place? and Chignik Pride. Chignik Pride. Or, or, no, uh, a, 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 ADF, Aleutian Dragon Fisheries. I, I thought it was a dragon up there. Yeah, Aleutian yeah. Dragon I, Fisheries and and and, and uh, Chignik Pride, and so I was sitting on. I was still looking for work. I had some nice looking rain gear, some light rain gear. I remember this beautiful red light rain gear. I stood out pretty good. I mean, I looked like I knew what I was doing because I've been, I can strut myself because I'm a Bering Sea fisherman. Now, if I'm going to Chignik, you're, you're, it's a whole different deal because you're, you're a Bering Sea fisherman, which is, you know, you, you stepped it up a notch. So I, anyways, I'm looking for a job going up and down the beach and I can't find, I can't find a decent job in Chignik Bay. And my friends are saying me, they're telling me that I should go to Chignik uh, Lagoon. Oh, uh, okay. Right around the corner. Yeah, right around the corner. We're gonna Long, and there's Long a Eagle Rock there, and there's, yeah, Long Eagle Rock, and up into the lagoon there. And there's a flat side. There's not a dock. There's not a hotel. There's not a restaurant. There's nothing. There, you know, there's an airstrip, and at the end of the airstrip, there's a pole with a telephone on it, and that's about all there is. That's your public meeting spot or whatever. There ain't nothing over there yeah. at that point. I, I think it's beautiful though. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's, yeah. it's gorgeous. So I, I I hitched a ride over there with this boat. And he gave me a ride. A white, a white captain, which are, and he's taking me over to a real native area, and the, and I tell I went and tell some of the other crew members that I'm heading over to Lagoon. They're going, you're going Lagoon? I go, yeah. And they're going, oh man, you gonna know what they're gonna do to you over there? Oh, what are they gonna do to me over there? They're gonna bend you over in a rock and they're gonna fuck you. <laughs> I go, shut up. <laughs> no, no, no. They said they told me that these and I was kind of half ass scared. You know, I'm going, well, shut up a well, bitch. So. Again, this is 87. How old are you now? You're 20 uh, something. When was I? 20. Uh, uh, I'm going to be 30. I'm going to be 30. That's a pretty short ride from, from uh, Chignik Bay to the lagoon. It's what, uh, 20 minutes, maybe 30 no, minutes? No, no, it's an hour. It's an hour, hour. I guess I'm, I'm also taking on a skip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's a good hour so on what, these little boats. You, know, you go by your... Mud Bay around Negro Head. And... Yeah, was that was that mm-hmm. in your head going over there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Saying? I was looking around, who in the hell is going to fuck me? You know? <laughs> And then you get there, and it's all low tide, and, and so you got to you're going. Well, how do you get out this boat? And you know, it's all big old mud hole, and, and you got to kind of. You, you t- we take the skiff in, but you, I, actually, I waited to high tide, and then you take the boat in closer, and they got a little mooring buoy they put it on, and then you get a skiff, and you get a skiff ride. I go and walk to one end of the beach to the next, and I start down at one end, and and I, and I. Starting to introduce myself, seeing crews working on nets and going in, hey, can I do anything? No, no, we're good, we're good. And then I get all the way down to the end. Of the end, And now I'm kind of wondering where in the hell I'm going to stay tonight. You know, I'm starting to get a little more desperate. I'm, I'm starting to think, how's this going to work out for me? And uh, I'm walking up to this last house way on the end of the flat side on the lagoon there. And I'm walking up to the house. As I'm walking up to the house, they got a shop in there. And I, and I heard that this guy was the Highliner the year before and and everything, and uh, as I'm walking down the up to the dock, I see or up to the house, I, this lady comes running out of the house, and she says, "Get the fuck out of here, you piece of shit!" And she starts screaming like hell, and I and I'm looking, Jesus Christ, you know, I, I haven't even got to her. I'm just walking up the driveway, and then I see this dog running like hell, and then I go, "Oh shit!" She was yelling at the dog, 
<laughs> I thought I was busted right there. <laughs> I, I, I go up to I go up to the shop and I, I hang out in the shop and I start filling needles and meeting these guys and working on their net and finally the captain shows up in the shop and who are you? He's a big big guy, big old uh, Russian Aleut. Who are you? And he has the squeakiest little voice you ever seen. I told him, I'm, I'm uh, you know. Harley or Steve? I think I was Steve at that point. And I'm looking. You know, maybe I was Harley. Yeah, I was Harley in that village. And so I'm, I'm going. I'm Harley, and I'm looking for a job. And and he, he well, maybe you know, we'll see. We'll see here. And, and, and so I just kept fucking working and working. And pretty soon, well, you can have you can st- you can stay here. And so I got this place to stay. And then I worked for a Did few days. Did anybody ask you to start help working, or you just went up there? No, and just you start... just start. You just start working. You know, you, you now you're getting kind of worried about how this is going to go. Dinner's coming, maybe. <laughs> well, a yeah, place to stay. And so I worked there for a couple of days, and he hired me on for the five percent guy, the extra guy. And 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 it was cool though. He had a new boat. It was the Captain Sam. This thing was, this thing. You know, Michael Gruner. I do. Yeah, yeah. I do. Know yeah, I, yeah, you know the voice yeah. then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he was funny, and so he's a river rat, and so he's running up on step up the river there, and, and it's going to be a flare opening up there at Mensis Point, and everybody's up there. All the boats are starting to watch around. They're watching Michael because he was the head guy last year, and he's the river rat, and he sits there until about 10 minutes before the opening, eight minutes before the opening. He, they're going to have a flare opening, and everybody's jockeying around waiting. No gentleman, nothing. This is going. Just lay your nets out. And right before, the eight minutes before, he turns around and starts heading out. And he's heading back out the, out, out the bay. And he's going back to Blind Channel right before his boat was moored at. And, and we're up on step, and he's racing like hell. And we get there, and there's fish all through that Blind Channel. And, he, and it's foggy, too. And he makes his big set, and we just start getting him. And we're towing on this and towing on this for an hour and a half. And, and all of a sudden, these other boats are starting to come back. They made a set. They didn't catch shit. And he's coming back, and they... Uh, and they're and they're looking at us and 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 we don't have our net closed yet. We're, we're still towing. We're st- and, and see the legally they're they're our, uh, you know however they do it. They're, they're gentlemen rule. You can still come inside my net because this is still my set. And you know, it's not like your second set. It's still your first set. Anyways, he he's looking and he sees this other boat coming. It's Gunner Gunner Anderson. And he go, oh shit, we're gonna get gun smoke, boys. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get gun smoke because Gunner's coming. And, and thank God Gunner seen some fish before he came to see ours. And, and so he took his fish and we go, oh, okay, we got him. And he's got me up on the bow and I'm plunging this big pole in the water. Plunging, plunging, plunging. And he and wants you to chase the fish back into the net. And he wants me to keep plunging like, he says, I want you to plunge like you never plunged before. And, um, and you never plunged before. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, so, so I'm just paying a bang a bang. God. This guy's got me just crazy. He's like foaming. He's a crazy guy, man. It was fun. And and it all it all settled. I, I got 10,000 uh, sockeye that day in that set. And we're just oh, deck loaded. Man. We're deck loaded. We just, and all of a sudden, here come all my friends that have been watching me. They're wondering what they thought I was going to be fucked on that flat rock, right? And they're all coming back. They haven't seen me. This is opening day. Right. And they're coming back out of Mensa's Point, and they're coming out the lagoon, and then they see uh I'm waving at him because I got that fancy rain gear on. You can right. see me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go, oh, shit. You know, look at it. He's loaded, you know. And I just want to I just want to say real quick or, or ask your opinion. <coughs> I've been all over Alaska and seen a lot of salmon, and I think that Chignik has some of the most beautiful sockeye that there are. Oh, they, yeah, that's a gorgeous they fish. Big, oh, fuck. And they are just they're beautiful. Big. Oh, me, we're 9, 10 pound average, you know. Yeah. They're, I think, big there's, fish. I think they're still running 6.8, 7, 7.2, somewhere oh. in that range. Oh, it's, I mean, a, it's, a, it's a nice fish. We always got paid fish. more than everybody at that point. And the, these fish are so funny because you're fishing in the lagoon with one of those beach saints. And when and when you're just a shallow little net, and it, we're bouncing off the bottom all the time. Yeah, all the time. And these guys fall over, and, and you're screaming, help, help, I fell over. And the guy says, stand up for fuck's sakes, you know. <laughs> and you go, oh, oh. <laughs> No, you're right shallow in a little shallow net, and it's, it's like a little flash water. And these fish are like crazy coming at you, trying to get out. When you plunge, they go back about 18 inches, and then they try again. And you just got to keep plunging and plunging. Just, just coming in there from Mud Bay uh, into the lagoon, yeah. if it's low tide, there's only a little small, small oh, yeah. channel you all, can All those get big bars in. there. Yeah, yeah, you got the lower bar and the upper bar and all that. Yeah. Oh, well, it's so, a fun, it was a fun place to fish. You had a good time. I fished there for nine years, eight nine years. I never I, I stayed with that same guy that I got the boat ride the first time. After I did Michael one year, then I got back on that guy that gave me the ride the first time, Jason Alexander. 
And I and I love Jason. What, we, a, what we, a phenomenal guy! What a great guy! I was yeah. so lucky to he, meet such a nice man. He now has uh, what is it, Captain Jay, <coughs> and uh, the Mary Jane. Or yeah, folks, yeah. Right? He had two sons that were fishing. He had three sons. And he's had some catastrophes yeah, in his life yeah. too. But but he uh, he's just a gentleman. It was so good to work for him and me and the crew. We never changed crew for six years. We were, me me and the other deckhand and the skiff man. All three of us got to be best friends, and we you know we were we were a force. And we, we and there's a hundred boats there at the time, and we were always either number two, number three. Uh, we, we nobody. We were always in top five. He's still a hell of a fisherman. Yeah, we did good. You know, he, he made, we made a lot of money, and we did good. And you no, know, he it was fun. It was, yeah. I, I enjoyed fishing with Jason so much, and then I do that with him and the salmon, and then we wound up I go going on the herring with him. That's so why I go on the herring circuit with him on that boat on the same boat the Captain Jay mm-hmm. and we did the we did the, uh, uh, Prince William Sound and Homer and, and we go we go Cook Inlet and then we head off to Togiak but no it, it was freaking that was those are some fun times so, so one year on the Captain Sam eight years then or nine years on the Captain Jay uh, uh, yeah nine nine years nine yeah years. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah a long time with You're him the only reason I quit is because then I had to I, I was still I, I, at the same time, I, I've been doing salmon, herring, with with Jason, and then at, I was also doing uh, crab on my other. Uh, I was, when I was, were you home? Uh, <laughs> I didn't come home and change change gears, man. They change gears, get a week off, and you know, change gears and go again. Okay. Go crab, and I, I always went. Who, I, I, was on, I was on the, the Ra- I was on the Rainier and the Paragon, the Pacific, uh, uh, the Polar Sea, Polar Star. I work on a Polar Sea, Polar Star for five years, and the Rainier Paragon for five years. It's the same owner, and they kind of bounce around between right. two boats. Right. And then, and then at that point, and that, that was all while I was still working with Jason and Chignik. But then, it, then I got on the American Star, and the American Star was one of the premium, uh, premier bra- crab boats, a big, beautiful, most beautiful vessel in Alaska. And I, and I, and I also had my Coast Guard license at that point. So then I was working as a mate. And so I, I was kind of building up into something. Knew I wasn't going to buy a crab permit, you know, or, or a, a salmon permit, excuse me. I wasn't going to get a salmon permit, so I was not going to probably be able to, you know, I mean, Jason got his. A lot of people do different things, but he, you knock up a native. You knock up a native, and, you, and, they, and they have permits, right? And so then, then, you, then you get one. So, well, explain that a little bit. So you... I mean, a guy can buy a permit now. You can buy them. You can buy them then too, but they're half a million bucks. Or you know, and, and I, I buy. A, Were I, they then too? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was the most expensive permit in, in the state. Check it. Oh yeah. That's they, because they have the most the beautiful fishing. Well, well we were state. making big bucks. You know, we were the high place when I think when uh, one year when I was. Uh, the highest boat I was number two in Chignik and I and I could probably I could tell you that it, out of salmon fish in the whole state of Alaska there were three crew members that made more money than me and they, they were in Chignik you know nobody made more money than me in the state of Alaska and that's what you're fishing for is who can make the most money mm-hmm. right and, they, and I knew no other area could be, be to us did you, you know? get that Corvette then <laughs> yeah right <laughs> go rock it up <laughs> no I still had other things going on but okay so um that, that. So we, that took us from what eighty seven then to. I, mean, I think when I left Jason was uh, that was probably the early nineties, and we were going to quit because I was going to go on the. Um, oh, excuse me. The big. Oh, that, I started fishing with Jason in eighty eight, so I've been ninety five or ninety six. Yeah. Going to the big beautiful Alaska. I was going to go the American Star, American and, Star. and we were going to go crabbing in Russia, and I was going to be the mate, and then he gave me my first job. He, I was running a boat. He let me be the uh, tender captain. Okay, so, tendering in the summers, hauling yeah, haul yeah, salmon. Yeah, so I'm going to be able. I'm going to be the captain on that. T- tender captain with the now. most beautiful boat in the freaking state. Look you out! The, this Look thing out, is world. gorgeous. It packs a million pounds. So on the radio, are you Harley or Steve? At this point, oh boy, I don't the know. I'm still, I'm still undecided on that to are this you really? day. Yeah, I don't know it. I don't know what the hell I am. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, I think you're Harley. So, you're so, Harley. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, how did tendering go? Oh, I liked it, you know, because I knew how salmon. I knew what salmon fishermen wanted, because I've been doing it, uh, yeah. and so and, and 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 we cared, and we had fun. I had I had a good crew. I had my nephew and my daughter, and I had people coming up. So I was having fun time with my daughter again, which I needed, you know, to be with her. 
And, well, previously it sounded like you were only home to change clothes and make me a little hungry. <laughs> yeah, there's always some time. Take her to time. Disneyland, do yeah. things every time. You yeah. know, you just come home and spoil her and then run. But yeah, well, yeah, no, he had to, he had to do just some stuff. Yeah, so then I got to do the American Star, and then, uh, and then th- we kept doing that for throughout the '90s. And and at that time, once again, you're I'm on I'm one of the a high line boat. So this guy always caught more crab than anybody in the, like the paleo fishing because he could pack more. He could pack a, he could pack a half million pounds. Everybody else and he could put all his crab pots back on the boat with a half million pounds under deck. And most guys if they can go get three hundred pound three hundred thousand pounds, but then they can't take their crab pots. So then it takes more time and then Well you can't go to the same place we're going. We're yeah. going up where the ice is. We're yeah. going we're going to go mess we're gonna go play cat and mouse with the ice. Because yeah. all the ice is frozen or the ocean's frozen over and we set our pots right when the wind blows one direction and try to get in some clear area to where we can fish in and then we but you're scared because if the wind turns the other way you're gonna lose all your gear. The ice takes them, yeah. How big was that boat? Hundred and fifty eight. Yeah. She's still around now? No. No, that thing caught on fire. I wasn't on board, and I, I, we were going to go up for a paleo fishing, and then they postponed the season that year because of ice, icing conditions up in the in the Pribilof. They postponed the season, and so we decided to go cod fishing, and we didn't need we didn't need everybody to go cod fishing. So I mean, right at the airport, the morning at the airport in Seattle, I, we we thought I, I'll just stay here. I volunteer. I don't need to go cod fishing. And so I stayed home, and the and the captain took the boat, and he went, and they went cod fishing. And I told him, "Be careful! It'd be nice that boat. You guys take care of it." And they went, and I don't know what the hell happened. The rain gear and this stack, and you know, in the engine room, and it caught fire, and they 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 lost the boat, man. They had to. It was a big. It was a show on uh, Discovery also about that boat being caught on fire. It drifted up on Unimac Island. The crew, the crew was okay? Yeah, the helicopter got the crew and the dog off. Thank God for the Coast Guard. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. No shit, they got those guys off, and the boat drifted up on the beach, and the, the the program was about how they were trying to rescue the boat off the beach. It was actually landed on the beach pretty good. It's right on the sandy beach, and look, and it's the most beautiful hole you've ever seen. This thing's gorgeous. You still think it's beautiful. She burned oh, down. Man. And I, still... I, you say, I say, you know, I say, every once in a while I miss my ex-wife, but I never, ever mix my... <laughs> I always miss my boat, you know what I mean? When I was young like that, I was, yeah. oh, that was terrible. So that was, that was a... That was 95 through... Uh, it sank in 99. So 44 years after that. Yeah. So now you're, now you're a guy, but at the stage... Well, and at the same time, we were going through crab rationalization. Things are starting to give, come around. And I, I got... Well, I, I was fortunate enough, I met I met a, a gentleman that... Um, Pat Dwyer. And Pat, and Pat worked at Norquest. And Pat, and Pat uh, hired me to be the captain. He was the manager. He hired me to be the captain of the uh, Cape Caution. And that was in the uh, year 2000. I remember I left Seattle here before Y2K. I was, I was, in, I was in Ketchikan... During the uh, New Year's Eve, I thought like when, you, when you thought your GPS and everything's going to shut down, shut down. I go, oh shit, I'm going to go try it, you know. And but I, it, it didn't, it didn't. But I took that boat up for a few years with Norquest, and then and then uh, parlayed that into start working on another bigger boat that Pat had, the Beverly B, another and and um, and then kept doing that along with uh, salmon tendering, and when the when the uh, American Star sank. I, I was lucky enough to get a job on the Arctic Eagle, and so I got to run the Arctic Eagle for tendering. And then I would look for another boat to go crabbing on. And Pat was hiring me to be the crab captain. So, I, so I, my was life that, was still getting balanced was out. That, was that your first crab captain job then? Yeah, yeah. The Cape. How, Co- how did that go? <laughs> I mean, that's still a beautiful boat. I love that boat. Cape Caution. Yeah. Oh, uh, we co- Cape, uh, Cape. Uh, what do they call it? The Cape Tragic or something. That thing was always breaking uh, down. I love it. I love it because of Kirby. I don't, do you know Kirby? Oh yeah. Yeah. He. Oh yeah, he's he's still there. He's he, still that there. man has done some incredible things. Oh, I mean, yeah. just a, he's a genuinely nice guy that goes out of his way to make you feel good. Right. You know? Right. No, he's an awesome tenderman. He is really good. Uh, that boat, we did fine. We had some pretty good season. I, t- I wound up going, doing some you know crazy fishing. That was in the Derby time, and my buddies had bigger boats, and they would talk me into staying out with them during the storm. And I go, oh, Jesus. You know, me and this little boat's a lot different than them, and they're bigger boat. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there jogging next, next to them, but 
you say in your buddies talk to you in the state house, so they were captains too. Yeah, right? my other captain, my other captain buddies. I'm, I your, gotta run to the island. They're going, no, nah, we're staying here. I ain't got nothing wrong about me staying here, bud. And now you're rubbing shoulders with captains. You are a captain, and this is the this is the crew you're. You got to figure out how we're gonna be the most productive. Right. You know, yeah. that's how you're gonna be judged. If you're gonna still be a captain, you're gonna be productive. And that, that was before the. Before Rationalization, yeah. yeah. Yeah, when rationalization happened, I did. I already did a couple of years of the Cape Caution, a couple of years of the Beverly B, and then rationalization was coming. 05. Yeah. And and how'd you fare on that? I know some captains got actually captain's quota. And no, I didn't get any captain quota. I pre-qualified. See, that was part of the problem of being on the American Star. When I was on the American Star for all those years, and we were doing so well, it, it would have been a, a good time for me and my career to go get in a little boat and be a captain of it. But at the same time, I was on a Highliner boat, and I was in second in charge. And it's hard to ever leave something that good. And I didn't ever leave because I was just my life was good. You know, You're making that money, I'm right? making good money, and I, and I got a good life. I'm working with Roger, Roger Overa. He he was the owner of that boat, and Sam Yella. They were the owners of that boat, and they were really fair and nice. I've always kind of stuck with the Norwegians. When I, that was my theme when I started crabbing with starting with Alaska Monarch, being a Norwegian, and then the. Uh, uh, Polar Sea, you, Polar Star, Norwegians, uh, Royal, uh, the uh, uh, Paragon Rainier, Norwegians. I met that Norwegian guy in the Rainier. I was sitting there. That was when I was fishing in Chignik, and I, and my and I was went up elk hunting. And I, and my friends are going. We're talking in the morning. We're up in the middle of the woods up in Yakima elk, elk hunting. And my friend said, "You going to go uh, crabbing this season? You know, it start. It's in November. we're elk hunting in November. You going Opelio fishing in January?" And no, uh, I had a good summer, you know. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay home for a little while. I'm just gonna stay home. And so then, hey, okay, cool. Well, we'll meet you at the truck at noon or whatever. Yeah, okay. And so then I go off elk hunting. And I'm sitting in the middle of the woods. It's raining like hell. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, God damn, I got probably a lot of taxes due. And I, what the hell am I doing up in the woods here? I should be looking for a job. You know, what the, kind of what the hell am I thinking? And so then. I'm sitting there think, talking to myself, sitting in this, up in the hills in Yakima, and all of a sudden I hear some noises, and I think the elk are coming. And I t- turn my head around, and and uh, I see this big Norwegian guy coming with Grunden rain gear, big orange rain gear, older Norwegian guy. And he comes down the trail, and I go, uh, hi. And he, and he starts talking to me, and I realize he's Norwegian. And I said, well, what boat you got? You know, just making yeah. a shot in the dark. And he, but, well, I got, 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 got the r- 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 rain here. And it was Alf Sorbic. Alf had a, he had a, a real bad stutter. And I go, well, well, yeah, I had a friend that works on the Rainier. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to have a, I'd like to go fishing with you on the Rainier. And I told him about my history and my stuff. And we sat there and talked in the middle of the woods. And, well, okay, I'll take you, I'll take you crab fishing, he said. I can go, I can go with him. And I go, wow, okay. And so then I go running back down to the uh, truck at lunchtime and I, I see my buddies and they, I'm all excited. They go, well, well, what's going on? Did you, did you get? A, did you see some elk? I go, no, man. I got a crab job. <laughs> and they're going, shut up. You said you weren't going crab. What are you get? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh man, I met this big Norwegian guy in the woods. I got me a crab job. It sounds like you still made a good shot. <laughs> right. Right. Oh yeah. No, that was cool. But anyway, so yeah, I was stuck. I was stuck with the Norwegian. Uh, the Norwegian clan, they've always treated me right. And with no no Norwegian blood? No Norwegian blood, no. No, no, no. So only, I'm only you, Norwegian by intercourse. No. Right. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you did marry a Norwegian yeah, girl. Yeah, I married a Norwegian girl. I, 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 they set my skates high, man. That, that might have to be an entirely new episode. <laughs> so, Harley, that entire time you were up there, uh, did you ever, were you ever scared? You know, I've been scared many times, Mark. Many, many, many times. And you're out in the, fishing this many years, 35, 37 years, out in the middle of the Bering Sea. I've been scared so many goddamn times where you get this little voice in your head going, somebody's going to die today. And you go, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear it go, nope, somebody's going to die today. And you're scared to shitless. You, you, you better be scared. Yeah. Oh, you better be. I've been scared so many goddamn times. Do you remember, <laughs> do you remember, do you remember well... I spend most of my life scared. You know, I mean, you got you better be because you're going to react. You better you better be looking for something that's going to bite your ass. Right. Because if you don't, something's going to bite your ass. <laughs> that's not a good thing. No, no, I've been scared lots and lots and lots of times. You know, and never to the point where I, we're listing over and I think we're sinking. No, I never sank. I never washed a guy over. Or, 
Never had a death on board, thank goodness. Knock on wood. Knock on but, that, yeah. but, uh, That's mahogany. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But but at the same time, you know, always scared. Always, oh, yeah. always scared. That's probably a good way to be, you know, right? Well, some people say that. I have other captains go, why are you always looking at the bad part? Why don't you just think of the good and keep thinking about the good? And they go, well, that's not how I'm wired, man. Right. I'm trying to. I'm trying to make shit work. <laughs> Let's go to the good. You got something funny for me? Yeah. <laughs> got something good. Good and funny. Good and funny. Let's think of a good funny. Thirty-five one. years, you got one good, one good little <laughs> cherry sitting in there somewhere. Oh man. Oh man, it's just sick in here. Let me think a second of a good mm-hmm. funny one. We got some funny ones, huh? Hmm. Let me s- sip on my beer here, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I just while you're while you're taking a minute, I, I got to mention when you uh, when you were in Chignik and you were going up to that last house and and you go walking up and the gal comes out screaming, I'm like, get the get the yeah, out of here! Oh, right? Michael's it's, it's wife. A dog, yeah. It's a dog. It's a dog. So. Uh, one of my experiences in Chicknick was, at the time, uh, it was a plant. It was a plant there, and it was a trident plant um, at that time. And uh, the, the the meal schedule was all set, and guys had to come in and you know eat at their scheduled times. And and the management, for whatever reason, always ate early, you know, because that was they would eat before everybody else, before the actual lunch hour. So they'd get out of the way before everybody else came in. Uh. And uh, so we were going in to eat, and a uh, friend of mine, Jeff, Jeff Miller, he brings his, he brought his dog up, Vetter, was his name, Eddie Vetter. Uh, I know Vetter. Jeff, yeah. Yeah. So he brings his dog up, and, and we're, we're waiting to, for the galley to open to go in, and as soon as the door opened, um, here comes his dog running inside. Well, a little Mexican guy was coming right in behind him, a little Hispanic guy coming right in behind him, and, and Jeff just said, Vetter, out! We screamed and pointed, and both the dog and this kid both turned around <laughs> and started walking out. Oh yeah! And Jeff's like, "Not you!" Not yeah, you. yeah, right, right. Uh, I took a little Mexican guy. When I took him in, I took him uh, to this. Uh, I hired him, and I took him over to the uh, Mariner game, and and we were at the baseball game, and all of a sudden they they stand up and they start singing. Oh, say, can you see? And, he, and he's going, man, these people are polite. They're, uh, Jose, can you see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see just fine, Jose. <laughs> 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 you can do just fine. Do you have any uh, Do you have any advice for guys starting to get in this, this industry now? I mean, you've been doing it for 35 years. Yeah, yeah, I do have some advice. I give the same advice I gave the first guys I hired her. No, you guys got to watch out. You know, but you, I mean, I remember hiring this one kid. He wanted a job with me, and I, I and I, he he pulls up, and I'm going to meet him for an interview. And he pulls up in his car, and he's got a pretty girl in the car, and the kid car seat in the back seat. And I, oh wow, you, you got you got a family? Oh yeah, yeah, I got a family. Go, wow, that's great. You got any uh, alcohol or drug problems? No, no. Oh, good, good. Any IRS problems? <laughs> no, no, no IRS problems. Well, you might want to get ready for all that shit. You're gonna continue. <laughs> you're gonna continue coming with me. <laughs> no, that was. I I tried. I try to get these kids. Uh, no, you want them to have a hope in there, and I do think think there is a good solid hope for it. Well, we're we're getting older, right? I mean, uh, yeah, they, yeah. The old they, guys are quitting, and the. Well, there, there's a, there's definitely a, a vacuum here where they need it. There's a missing generation there that these kids need to, and they well, they they work hard and do it. They're they're still uh, I'm proud of it. You know, I'm not always proud of my colleagues. I've got to work with a bunch of assholes, you know. <laughs> but, but 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 I do like what we've done and what what kind of life I've gotten out of it. So it's it's all it's a, it's a pretty good life where you're at now, right? I mean, really comfortable life. You know, you 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 you're you're, he- you're happy and you're healthy. You know, and and you. You've seen some things, and you, you 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 can you can hold your head up high when you walk through the town and you and you go to the grocery store or something. You know you can do something that not very many people can do, and you can do it well. 
And so it gives you a certain pride, you know, where you're going, okay. So, so you're walking in the grocery store, and you get on that bright rain gear, and you're the, you're, you're the, you're, you're the big rooster cock strutting down yeah, the aisle, right? right? <laughs> yeah, my way. If they only knew. Right? Yeah, yeah. Bearing no. sea fishermen. Yeah, right? yeah you got to be humble about it, too. Yeah, but, oh, but, absolutely, absolutely. But, yeah, we do, we do need fresh blood in our fleet, though. I mean, not, not when I, again, I, I, I point this out several times uh, throughout many of these broadcasts. Our fleet is anybody up there doing the work you know it's not any company or any any individual company it's uh it's all of us i mean uh right. everyone you know all of us need need fresh no, I, blood no, i'm really proud of the young guys i have on my boat right now i'm right now i'm the captain of, and we had several guys who were getting their 40s and 50s and we kind of been guys have been retiring and i've been weaning younger guys in there now i got two or three guys that are 24 25 years old you know well, you're you're the captain of the southern wind up correct, there for correct, crap. Yeah. Well, what I what I find the funniest about that is that you're like Mark. I'm gonna I'm gonna go up and start my crab, and then the next thing I know, you're already back in town. You're <laughs> you're done. Oh yeah. So over We're the done. years, did you just find the honey pot and you're not telling anybody about no, it? You were no, done, no, no. The whole idea is when you when you go is if, because of, maybe because all the years I spent working so many months a year. Right now, the the especially with the quotas and issue, the thing I know the first is I want to get out of there. Right when you land. The, the next plan is how are we getting out of here? You, you know, you always say, I'll be happy when we get the pots on. I'll be happy when we set the pots. I'll be happy when we fill that tank. I'll be happy when we deliver. I'll be happy when we get the pots back on. I'll be happy when we put the pots on the beach. You know, you're never going to be so goddamn happy. So <laughs> <laughs> See, just get the work done. Let's just get out of here. I, uh, yeah, we're running out of time here, but, man, uh, Harley, I'd, I'd really like to have you back again to continue some of these stories because I... I feel like we could do maybe three or four podcasts. Yeah, just, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got a couple uh, more stories, Mark. You kind of had me on the point there a few times, but I'll, I, I'll, I'll go I'll refresh. I, I really appreciate you coming today to do this. Thank um, you. Thank you. And hopefully you you uh, you like it and you'll come back again. Yeah, keep feeding beers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. This has been another episode of Galley Stories. I'm your host, Mark Kaler. Uh, stories of the Bering Sea and beyond. I hope you enjoyed today's episode because I really enjoyed listening to it myself. And we will see you guys next time. All right.